How's it going guys? It is 2.38 a.m. Tuesday, July 19th here in Japan and we have a past level question for step one and step two. This question and variants of it show up all over the NBME exams, particularly for step one, okay? Not my fucking opinion. Uh, I've gone through all the exams and I've organized the questions subject specific. Variants slash variations of this question have shown up repeatedly. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical. M-E-H-L man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. 71-year-old dude, two-day history of fever, no past medical history, temperature 101 Fahrenheit, serum creatinine 2.2 milligrams per deciliter, normal range 0 0.7 to 1.2. Once you've hit a creatinine of two, you've lost about 90% of your renal function. Digital rectal exam reveals an exquisitely tender prostate. There is no costovertebral angle tenderness. Question wants to know the most likely explanation for the elevated creatinine. Let's just whip through the answer choices here. Choice A, diffuse cortical necrosis. Wrong fucking answer. This is the extension slash exacerbation of acute tubular necrosis. Long fucking discussion. Could do a 19 minute clip on ATN in and of itself. You should know that the PCT is the part of the kidney that is most susceptible to anoxic slash hypoxic injury due to the high concentration of ATPase pumps that have a high oxygen demand, okay? So if we have acute blood loss, surgery, trauma, if we have uh, an acute drop of perfusion in the kidney, such as an episode of ventricular fibrillation, uh, we can get acute tubular necrosis, all right? As well as acute heart failure. I just made a recent clip on that. Obviously, other etiologies, aminoglycosides, uh, rhabdomyolysis, uh, contrast nephropathy, long fucking discussion. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, wrong answer. This is going to be the answer on USMLE if you have a patient who has sickle cell, who has nephrotic syndrome. There's no blood in the urine with this. So if you look at some resources for FSGS, you'll see all of these nonsense etiologies, okay? IV drug use, HIV, interferon use, absolute nonsense, okay? I mean, this pretty much is just nephrotic syndrome and sickle cell, okay? That's it. I think maybe one question I've seen where it was HIV patient, okay? But pretty much this is just... Um, sickle cell patient who who has a renal issue and there's no blood in the urine. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, papillary necrosis. Okay, so renal papillary necrosis, wrong answer. Uh, this is going to be a sickle cell patient who has blood in the urine. Okay, it can also be NSAIDs. It can rarely be due to infection. I mean, we clearly have an infection here, but it's the wrong fucking answer. This, as I said, is going to be probably four out of five times sickle cell patient with dark urine, all right? Where a sickle cell patient with nephrotic syndrome, FSGS. Choice D, reflux, wrong fucking answer. So vesico urotel reflux, obviously important etiology for pyelonephritis. This is not pyelo, okay? There is no costovertebral angle tenderness. This CVA tenderness, pathognomonic for pilo, I'd say 19 out of 20 questions. Virtually all questions on NBME exam for pilo give you CVA tenderness. Okay, it's super fucking high yield. So this is clearly just prostatitis. Okay, so it's not vesico ureteral reflux. Also just high yield for pediatrics, that etiology in terms of causing recurrent acute pyelonephritis, which will lead to chronic pyelonephritis, which presents as tubular atrophy. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, tubular hydrostatic pressure is the correct answer. Now, as I prefaced with, this is all over the NBME exams. <clears throat> you need to know that BPH, now he's got prostatitis and you say, well, you know, what's, how does this relate to prostatitis though? I don't understand. Okay. Well, he still has BPH. All old dudes have BPH. All right. So yes, he has prostatitis, but the prostatitis in and of itself is not why he has elevated creatinine. It's the BPH. Okay. And U.S. simile wants, you know, increased tubular hydrostatic pressure backs up to the kidney, increased Bowman capsule hydrostatic pressure. Okay. I've seen it like four or five times across the NBME exams, when we talk about uh, the exams just from uh, 6 to 19 alone, let alone 20 through 30, okay, which obviously the, the newer forms altogether, but we're talking uh, on, those, on those old forms, 
five, six times it's shown up. Okay, and the questions have repeated on 20 through 30. So all over the place on the NBME exams, super fucking high yield. You know the deal, continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.